All right, look, you know, I do read all the comments down below the summary videos, and so that means I know that in this power bunker building, there are all sorts of things like high voltage controllers for motors, uh, potentially battery backups and inverters and switches and all sorts of equipment that are used to run the launch site. I do appreciate everybody down below that helps me explain what there is when something comes across the screen that I don't know myself. But it is, like I said, another Starbase summary, and here we're going to see some lifts lifted into the flame trench. I mean, I guess they're sort of lifts being lowered into the flame trench, but they do have to be lifted first. I guess they had to go so high because they went all the way over the gantry structure and then down to the flame, the flame trench to work. We continue to see the demolition work piece by piece on the top of the high bay. A lot of you asking where the bar in the high bay went. <sighs> yeah. I don't actually know if there was ever a physical bar. Like, did they install the actual bar part of the bar? Or was it just, like, an empty space with some flooring and then one of those little light machines in the corner, like, spraying lights on the roof, spraying lights, shining lights on the roof? Um, I, I don't know that there was ever actually a bar bar up there. So where did the bar go? Well, it just ceased to exist as they tore it down piece by piece. In any event, I'm sure they have other large buildings that they can put gathering places on top of, as we will see. And plus, I mean, wouldn't you just trade in the high bar for a giga bar? I mean, there are other places with place, or there are other places with bars called the high bar, right? Um, I'm not aware of any other places called the giga bar, the terra bar, the peta bar. I don't know. Anyways, last one's a little questionable there. Uh, there's that big 11200 crane. That's, you know, how do you say that? Do you say 11,200? Do you say 11200? See, I'll call the company. Like, I don't care. I'll find out the name of the brand on the company, and I'll pick up the phone and ask for their comms team and be like, hey, I had a quick question. Do you call that the 11200 or the 1120? And they're like, no, we just call it the crane. Um... If I have time, I'm on the road, so I'm a little uh, slack on time right now, or short on time, I guess. But if I have time, I would 100% try to look that up and literally just call and ask. Just reporting the facts straight from the uh, source. In any event, a lot more work. Let's see if there's anything specific. We got some little safety flags flapping there. Some detailed work. Really look at that rust on the joints and stuff, even inside the building. Those joints look rusty. Has that just happened since they've taken off the roof panels, or has it always been that way just because of the, the air? Oh, look at that. That's a part being removed. That crane honestly looks really wacky with the uh, like center pillar that extends so high. It's got like a portable tower crane. Not really. Just see that gray center sort of pillar? Anyways, wow. Oh, this, this is like... It's not craneception. That would be wrong because we're not making the crane think about a crane here. Um, it's just a crane that's carrying a crane, and the inception meme doesn't technically work if you actually watch the movie. But that is a part of that big bridge crane. I read some comments down below in the previous video about uh, how the crane structure itself is specifically sized to the building, but some of the more generic parts, like valves and controllers and winches and pulleys and motors and that sort of stuff, could be reused in other cranes, but the main structure itself is unlikely to be reused in, uh, in a future crane, right? Here's another bridge crane structural piece. You can tell because of the way that it is, it's yellow, painted like the other pieces of the bridge crane. That's actually really cool that Gage was out and uh, caught this. Gage is doing a lot of uh, field work for us, but more like field work around uh, cleaning up sites and bots and deploying cameras and that sort of stuff. But targets of opportunity, when he sees things like that going on, it's pretty easy for him to pull over and get a quick clip. So massive thanks to Gage. And there's Caesar's name again as well, getting the shot of the rocket guard. Ah, Stargate. It says it on the building there. In a future video, we will be able to say that SpaceX has buried the Stargate, which is kind of cool, but also it sort of seems like a monopoly because if they just didn't bury the Stargate, we wouldn't need their rockets to fly places, and we could just use the Stargates. Well, 
not really. Eventually, we would need to use the rockets to fly to planets that don't have stargates. But you get the point <laughs> in any event. All the way back to the launch site, there's Pad B's gantry. Is that? Nope, that's not colored parts being added to it. That's just a, a red and yellow lift that was in there. Chopstick works. If you were paying attention to Starbase Live, remember you can catch us live 24-7. Literally just go to nsf.live and it'll bring up a list of 24-7 streams. But they raised these up to the top of the towers. Uh, towers. It's not towers plural. Tower singular. Single? Singular? In the last couple days. There's tower one and the elevator going up and down the middle. Yeah, that looks like tower. It, it was a little shinier, so I was like, "Does that is that tower two? But that was tower one. Here's a view through a paper roll tube of the orbital tank farm. Regular tank farm. It's just a very narrow view of things that are going on. Another comment to address from the previous video. Somebody asked me, like, hey, why do you refuse to call it the orbital tank farm? Almost implying that I was being snarky that Starship hasn't made it to orbit. But actually, no. That's not my implication when I say you don't need to call it the orbital launch mount or the orbital tank farm. It's just that there's no suborbital launch pad anymore. There's no suborbital tank farm. It's all orbital. It's all being designed to support orbital launches of Starship. So there's no reason to differentiate and say, oh, well, this is the suborbital side and this is the orbital side. Uh, the suborbital launch side, the orbital launch side. It's just the launch site now because it has one purpose to get these rockets all the way into orbit. Like I said, I do. I read the comments. If you leave comments, sometimes I reply to you. Clearly can't reply to them all, but uh, I do read them and I try to answer questions and uh, catch up with things I might have missed, address concerns, like all sorts of stuff. It's like a asynchronous form of communication where you can hang out with me roundabout construction after we saw that shot of the power bunker there that looks oily you know normally you wouldn't want to drive your car through there but i almost want to drive the truck through that fresh oil because it would probably protect the underside of the truck a little bit from the salt on the beach maybe we shouldn't do that there's cones up Will be really interesting to see how effective that roundabout actually is i don't think it's going to be that effective because the roundabout doesn't end there so yes, it will give some people an opportunity to turn around, but if they don't know that they need to use that roundabout to turn around and they don't put up massive signs that say no turn around beyond this point, use the freaking roundabout, uh, I feel like RVs are still going to go to the end of the beach, see the sand and be like, oh, well, I guess there's a beach here, huh? We'll just probably turn around. All the way back, oh, look at all the manifold work. They've got a lot of that plumbed in. Sort of the, the green-coated main manifold there, then tons of little... Uh, connections, connectors at the top to help distribute that water. Doing a refill on the gas canisters again. There you can see the venting from the bottom of the canister. Actually, don't know if that's venting or is that like just condensation or what that is coming off, but we've seen that. They have like a sort of a, sort of a supply station and they can move those gases around to places that they need them without running long gas pipelines when their purposes for temporary construction, like shielding gases for welding operations, that sort of stuff. It's been like a corner, was that the stairwell, if I'm not mistaken, in one of those back corners there? And that looks like the internal framing for that wall, I guess. Huh. Like this one, Caesar caught one, the uh, stand passing the Star Factory. Palm trees are looking okay. I gave those palm trees like three weeks. But uh, they're still there. Does that person have a hard hat on? How cool. The hard hat, like, double functions as the safety helmet while riding the uniwheel thing. And then also you can just go right to do your construction work. It's very efficient. Clearly removing all sorts of inefficiencies from Starbase, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. They're tearing down the high bay. Like, come on. <laughs> I think that... Uh, the tearing down and rebuilding of walls and replanting of trees and all of the uh, rapid iteration of the site itself, maybe not, you could argue whether it's efficient or not. Like why view it as a sunk cost and just leave it there forever when you don't need that building and you actually place more value in the room to build a bigger building. But I digress. I know that's an interesting scaffold bit, sort of vertically hanging 
midway down the chopsticks. I wonder what exactly is going on with that one. There you can see the work where the chopsticks attach to the skate. Pipe is being pulled underground. That's actually kind of cool. I, I don't know if that big pipe is a conduit pipe. It's clearly a little flexible. The sticks with the spools that are turning are very interesting to me. My first guess would be they were sort of guides, so if the pipe gets to that, it's good. But the, the stick is not beefy enough to act as a guide. And they're turning. It's like it's pulling some of that blue string or wire or whatever that is uh, into the, the trench or tunnel or whatever. <sighs> this is just going <laughs> to... Look, it's not like an American thing that I don't believe in roundabouts. We have roundabouts near my house. I wish we had more roundabouts. Um, they do work. I just question the efficiency or the effectiveness would be the right term of this specific roundabout. But I, I guess we'll see. I d don't have a lot of faith in people's ability to operate vehicles near the end of Highway 4 where it terminates into the beach. I have spent many, many, many hours sitting stuck between cars and it's very much a tragedy of the common roads uh, situation where everybody wants to go their way on the road and park their car on the side of the road. And so nobody could use the road because the road is just clogged. That is the truth of the end of Highway 4. I like that. I made that up on the fly. Tragedy of the common roads. In any event, folks, it's a Starbase summary. My name's John. If I reply to you down below, you might see me call myself Das because that's what my mom calls me. We've been trying to get uh, some of the other languages in on these. If we have time, Adrian and Alex might get do some commentary, but they're busy with a lot of other stuff. So make sure you check that settings wheel. See if you can't switch to another language or just turn off the commentary if you want. And we will see you nerds later.